And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at La Phantom de la Opera, the Phantom of the Opera, or as I like to call it, Mr. Jack 3. This is a game, it actually says here, the Mr. Jack game system. If you ever play Mr. Jack or Mr. Jack New York, this is the same game with differences and you know there's thematic differences for one but there's also different ways there, there's some small differences in how the game plays and I'll mention those let me show you how the game plays the board which is which shows the opera house and it's a really beautiful board there's a lot of cool rooms on it it just has nice backgrounds and it's color coded what you do is you're going to put these characters randomly on the board in the different rooms and you'll put a lock next to the blue lady and the lock is blue so you know that it matches her and the gray character the room that he's in you turn the lights out with this token and that's gray the pink girl can use secret passageways and the passageways are pink to get from other room to another room you'll see there's yellow passageways to move from room to room La Carlotta token is going to start here if the players are evenly matched. If you think the Phantom has an advantage, you can put him he her here, which I would never, ever, 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 ever do. Or you could put her all the way up here if you think the Phantom is at a disadvantage, which I would often do. But anyhow, you have two players. One player is going to be the Phantom. The other player is going to be the Investigator. The Phantom is going to draw the top card of this to show who the Phantom is. Ah. Mag is the Phantom. The slight girl, the girl who looks so innocent, is actually the Phantom. The one who can run through the secret passageways. I bet you never thought of that, huh? Well, that is how the game works. So, I pick her, and the Phantom knows her secretly, and now the investigator is going to go first. The game comes with this really complicated card. It's really not that complicated, but uh, it shows that the investigator goes first, and then you flip it over to show that the Phantom goes first. The way this works is, on uh, a player's turn, let's say the investigator goes first, we turn over four cards. These are four of the eight characters that are in this game. The investigator picks one, moves that person, and takes their, their special action. The, then the Phantom will pick two of the remaining ones, and then the investigator gets the last one. When it's the Phantom's turn, we will turn over the other four characters, and the Phantom gets to pick one first, then the Investigator picks one next, then the Phantom gets the last one. We then shuffle them again, and we will do the same thing. Investigator turn, Phantom turn, and keep going back and forth until somebody wins. Now, when it's your turn, as I said, you can move somebody, and you'll move them You'll move the investigator from one room to the other room and then activate their special power. So what do the different people do? Well, this purple gentleman here, instead of moving, can switch with any other character on the board. The brown character, when he moves, if there's someone else in the same room with him, he can take them with him to an adjacent room. This blue character, when she moves, she can take the lock with her. She likes the lock doors, apparently. I already mentioned that Meg can go through the secret passageways into other rooms. Joseph here can turn off the lights. <laughs> it's fun to turn off lights into different rooms. And we'll, we'll come back to him. This guy's a jerk, and when he's in a room, he can make everybody else go away from that room. Doesn't like to have other people with him. While she is awfully charming and can pull people from adjacent rooms into her spot. Now, Raul, the main character, he gets to use this deck of cards here. And if the Phantom picks him, the Phantom will take the top card. And let's say it's one of the people in the game, the Phantom just puts it in front of him. And now the inspector, inspector cannot eliminate that person. But if the inspector had drawn Joseph, he would be able to take Joseph's character and turn him over to show that Joseph is now innocent. There's a couple Phantom cards in this thing too. When the Phantom draws those, the Phantom will move her over one towards the exit, and if the investigator draws them, the investigator moves her back one. Now, uh, as this game is progressing, after each round, we will see if the Phantom can do any mischief. The Phantom can do mischief if the Phantom is either A, in a dark room, or B, uh, by themselves. So, this room is dark, but we already know that guy's innocent. Now, Meg is the Phantom in this game. Now, Meg can't do anything because this guy's watching her, and these two can't do anything because they're watching each other. But these people are by themselves. So I say, if I'm the Phantom, 
The phantom is not causing any mischief. Oh, says the investigator, great. That eliminates her, her, and him, her, him, and him, because if they had been the phantom, they would have caused mischief. So now the investigator has me down to only four people. And then this lady runs the number of people who are still suspects. If the phantom had caused mischief, which it would have meant the phantom was either by himself or herself or in the darkened room, she would have moved an extra space. Now, if that ever causes her to get to the end here, then the phantom wins. If the investigator ever narrows down the suspects down to one person, then the investigator wins. And that is how you play. Now, I have to say right off the bat that I am not a fan of the Mr. Jack game system, even though my box here says, for Tom, just hope you'll have fun with this new Mr. Jack game system from the designer. Ah, I wanted to enjoy it so very much. I don't dislike this one. This one's the best of the three so far. It's okay. But I just can't get over the fact that I feel like Mr. Jack, or in this instance, the Phantom, is always at a disadvantage. I don't feel like there's a lot going on in the game. You can move the people, there's different deduction elements of the game, but essentially, on the first or second term, the investigator has eliminated half the characters, and the rest of the game is just kind of a cat and mouse as you try to maneuver those, those remaining suspects in the areas where you can eliminate them. It is possible for the Phantom to win, but I almost never win as the Phantom, and I almost always beat the Phantom. Now, I'm sure that there's people out there who, as the Phantom, would uh, run circles around me. I just, I don't know. I don't feel like there's a lot of depth to this game. You say, Vassal, that's the point, and you're probably right, okay? It's a deduction game. The artwork is great. The pieces are fantastic. This is a system that a lot of people are going to like. If you like the first two Mr. Jacks, you shouldn't even be hesitating. You should be running out and getting this now because this is this is cool. This is neat. And the special, I like the special abilities in this one more than the other ones. I like the fact you can turn the lights off. I like the secret passageways a lot. I like that you can lock the door. That's, that's neat. Those are neat special abilities. The repel people, bring people in, move people with you. That's okay. That's all more of the same. But so there is that. And I, I think Phantom of the Opera is a, a great story. I've always enjoyed it. I love the musical. So, well, that's that. I mean, it's a two player light deduction game. Some people are going to really like it. I know that because I play with people who really like it. But as for me, it's just okay. Mr. Jack 3 or Phantom of the Opera. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.